welcome to this series of courses on how to get started with ANSYS Q3D. And in our other previous videos, we've shown the user interface of the student version of the ANSYS Electronics Desktop, and that's AEDT for short. So ANSYS offers several electromagnetic solvers within this single AEDT user interface. We have HFSS, we have Maxwell, we have SI Wave, which are finite element FEM based solvers, and SBR Plus, which is based on ray tracing. And now Q3D is a quasi static solver. And all these solvers solve Maxwell's equations, but in different approaches. In this video, we're going to introduce you to the Q3D design type in the ANSYS Electronics Desktop. And Q3D, as I said, is a 3D quasi-static electromagnetic EM simulation software tool. And it calculates fields, equivalent circuits, S parameters, inductances, resistance, and capacitance. And the Q3D tool has similar results that the other solvers also have results that electrical engineers look for. And the key differentiator in this tool is in the term quasi-statics. So what does quasi-static mean? It means that this frequency tends to zero, thus making the wave effect negligible. And it decouples the E and H in Maxwell's equations. And depending on the application you're trying to simulate, you can solve for just one field, you can solve for E or H, and this saves you computational resources. What does that mean? It's a savings in both time and hardware resources, memory resources. In short, Q3D is a simulation software tool streamlined for quickly determining electroparasitic values of inductance, capacitance, resistance, and conductance. Q3D can be used for extracting the lumped RLCG parameters and SPICE models as well. And it can also be used for low frequency power, signal integrity, and select high frequency applications, wide vary applications. And the process flow for Q3D is really simple. It's very easy to follow. And what are they? Create the 3D structure, add boundary conditions, add nets, assign terminals, set up the solve solutions, view them. So let's go ahead and expand on these steps a bit more. Like most of the ANSYS simulation tools, the first and foremost step is to draw the physical model geometry. Simulate what you are going to model. And you can create 3D objects or 2D surface models inside of Q3D. You can import the structures that are designed using other CAD tools as well. Or you can actively link your model drawing, your mechanical drawing, as drawn inside the ANSYS space claim. It's in the toolbar. Next, well, let's assign boundary conditions. And Q3D offers two types of boundary conditions, thin conductor or infinite ground plane. The thin conductor boundary replaces the 3D conductor with the 2D sheet. So what does this mean? It means that the current lines on the conductor lies on a 2D surface. For example, if you used a conductor trace and you used a rectangular 3D model, instead of determining where the current lies, whether it's on the top or the bottom or the sides, it's now on a 2D surface, equivalent 2D surface for that 3D object. So it helps you specify the location of the charges. And the 2D sheet, it can be any lined or curved surface. It doesn't have to be rectilinear. Any shape without limitation. The infinite ground plane, you can apply that to a surface or an object, and it has what, as the name implies, assigns that object or surface to an infinite extent. So what does that translate to? That means simplifying the analytic equations. Your solving limits are now infinity. Also note, you can only have one infinite ground boundary condition in a single design. Okay, so the next step, assign nets. What's a net? So a net is a collection of touching conductor materials or surfaces or objects. You know, you can't have perfect electrical conductors in the same net as some non-PEC conductor material. So you can assign nets manually or automatically to any conductor ends. And nets can be classified as signal, floating, or ground nets. And a terminal can be assigned to a 2D or a 3D object, and it can be assigned as a source or a sink. Signal nets are typically sources, and floating or ground nets or sinks. You must use your engineering knowledge to define these terminals, because the assignments define the way Q3D solves. Q3D offers three types of solution setups. They're the capacitance, the conductance, DC resistance, and inductance. 
AC resistance and inductance. Plus, the nice thing about it is you can generate these resulting RLCG field plots and any corresponding E or H field plots, any corresponding electric or magnetic field plots, you get a visualization of these fields. So by default, Q3D extractors, ACRL and DCRL solvers, they're constant voltage, equipotential terminals. For the AC and RL calculations, a constant voltage is held over the perimeter of the terminal face of that selected surface. And for the DCRL calculations, the constant voltage is held over the area of the terminal face. Now, if you have a long list of nets, perhaps many conductor terminals that don't touch, but they are electrically connected, QCD supports a matrix reduction, so you can manually assign them. And in the solve setup, you explicitly select the Q3D solutions that you're interested in, the capacitance and conductance, the DC resistance and inductance, DCRL, the AC resistance and inductance, ACRL. You can select any of these or all of these. And after the simulation model is solved, you can perform post-processing of the obtained results. You can view the solution data in rectangular tabular format or in a rectangular plot. If you set up the variables and you perform the parametric solve, you can then view the optometric results. You can plot the field plots, the E and H, overlay them on the model geometry. You can create animations of these field quantities as well. Over and above that, you could create custom quantities and then also plot them. There's lots of things that you can do inside of Q3D. Actually, lots of things and customizations you can do in any of our ANSYS tools. So we just went over the steps that are necessary to launch a Q3D extractor simulation. In the next video, we're gonna show you how to design and analyze a planar spiral inductor using Q3D. And so thank you for watching this getting started video on the ANSYS Q3D extractor tool. And for more information on our ANSYS electronic tools or any of our ANSYS simulation tools, please go to ansys.com forward slash courses today.